Uh, Queen Jack suited for like 15 ish. We're just gonna jam it in there. Beshreg, Tsvikas, Dragos, Tolmas. Hope you're doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. I'll be doing great if I get hits. Jack. Or a 10. We've not run great in the all ins today, huh? I think our 20s adventure might come to an end soon, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, what's happening is we got Limp, Iso, Cool, Check Cool, then Lead. Don't lead the turn, which is really interesting in an Iso part. Like, it makes some sense heads up, big blind and stuff. And then we get a check and then we get a jam. This is very, very wild kind of hand. Um, Repping, I would say 4x plus, so like Pocket Kings, or a 6x8, or a 4x, which could be, you know, part of the Iso wing. Doesn't isn't too congruent with, like, let's say the traditional value Isos, but. Who knows? Uh, we'll start with a call with the king queen off here. Flop an open ender and two overs, obviously. See what try this trick wants to do. They go for just below, uh, so like a little just below. Uh, gonna call. Seven of spades comes. Wouldn't expect too much seven x to bet their sizing on the flop. So they do choose to check. Now it's a question of whether we want to bet or check. Now they might have bet that sizing with aces, for example and would be looking to check shove here. Um, they might have put that size with ace jack and look at check shove here. So I think we'll check. I don't want to face a check jam. And there's other rivers we can probably represent. Or we can just check down and have some throw down. Or we can hit. Uh, I think options are plenty for this hand. And they bet simple five. Interesting bet, by the way, because... Yeah, they're really repping aces. I guess I'm inclined to believe them. Pretty pretty difficult to find a bluff here, I'd say. That doesn't... I mean, it's not impossible, but we definitely interact with a lot of the bluffs. We want to have Queen 8 or something. It feels pretty difficult. Um, and I mean, I think value-wise, they're pretty uncapped there. So they could have 8-9 even. Certainly have a house with a 7x set. 10, 7, Jack, 7. And I think Aces, Kings, Queens, or Ace, Jack, or King, Jack is all very reasonable. Um, and we have King, High, right? I mean, it's not like we have to stretch our range too much. All right, we get a 9BB limp. We'll start with a check back here. Jack to Queen. We have a back to straight draw, back to flush draw, although the SPR is pretty dicey. Having said that, at 9BB, certainly a lot of the better Jack X and Queen X would think about going for um, an open jam. So I will try a small little raise here. We won't work all the time, but we have lots of, let's say, turns that we can open jam on. So like a heart, a four, um, would have made for perfect like turn barrel jams. And I expect this probably it's over limp stabbed a little bit. Um, and so worked out all right for us. And the price we set is pretty good, right? If that works enough of the time. We get ice again. We know who tries trick is capable of bluff ice wing. We've seen it before. He's also been pretty healthy on in terms of the frequency. So not going to fold the 10-8. Also nice when you flop top two. I'm hoping for like an open jam or something, but it goes for a check. I expect a lot of check folds. And so because of that, I'm just going to start with check back. And let's see if they've got like a queen four. If they've got a club, for example. Now they have an interesting spot with Jack five of a club or something. You know what I mean? Like, I guess they might go for a bit. Um, I will definitely be raising here. And we'll go 3.5. So it, it folds, it, it works quite well, functions in a couple of ways. And like, um, stops us getting, for example, given just a, a nice set your own price with like, against like Jack four of a club or something. Um, but also has uh, added benefit. I mean, obviously we get lots of value, right? And so you want to use a sizing where like worst, worst hands can call. Of course, we got worst hands going to call there, but yeah, it worked out right. We're going to limp this jet. We know lots of ISOs. Again, that felt ISO bluffy uh, the last hand because most hands in that situation, if you value, you're not checking and min betting. Uh, I'm going to start with check here. Again, try this tricks definitely seems capable so far when we play with them. 
in terms of finding bluffs. Um, and so we expect uh, they could be doing this again. Uh, expect them to bet most of their equity. So I'm actually going to go for a double check here. It's unusual. Wouldn't be always our play, but against try this trick, I will try this trick and uh, check the turn. And then the goal is to like do that and then call. And like he could have a queen, of course, but like it's whatever. We could also have two five off. So worked out all right for us. Uh, we should pay attention to the sizing because they went three cores on that river, right? With pretty, pretty. That's just not not mandatory bluff, but like bottom of the range bluff, like yeah. So we'll see if that becomes the sort of de facto bluff sizing that they seem to want to use a lot. All right, we check called the flop and send limp stab. We've picked up a gut shot. We picked up a queen high flush draw. These are good things. Our opponent bets 40%, which is interesting. When they're jack 10, they bet 2.1 into 4. And now they bet 40%. So I would suggest this is probably not likely top pair or thick value. Could it be a 7? I would say that's unlikely. Now, if we put all those together, do we want to try and bet something like 5.4 here to make an 8-fold? And I'm tempted to try it. I'm going to give it a go. Um, because of what we try and read this for. Now we got a fold, that's quite nice. We can have a lot of 7x there. Um, but that was more actually, I think, uh, let's say green light because of the sizing, perhaps, on the turn and the range difference there. All right, a three under sixes, no no hit. Lost Paradise is good. I could like to know I had my biggest losing session today. Any tips to recover mentally? Um, so, sorry to hear that Lost Paradise. Uh, they're never easy losing sessions. Um, so I, let's talk about it. I think some of the things to think about when you have a losing session is, um, the first thing is that it does come with a territory, right? So uh, if, we, if we play a lot of poker, everybody will have a downswing. And I think it's very easy to have a kind of Ah, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. You know what I mean? Like, or, or lots of guys will, will, everybody feels quite, can feel quite unique in their struggles in pokers. But actually, weirdly enough, everybody has that together. That's a very common uh, feature that we all have. Which it just feels like, oh, if only you'd seen the cards I got. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And, and all, all the losses um, will jam the Ace King suited. Is it lagging? Is it lagging any? I hope not. Seems to be okay. Wish it was lagging. We would have maybe won this. All right. Try again. The funny thing is, is if you play poker a long time um, and you plan to play a lot more poker, there is always a bigger downswing in the future. It's coming, which is a weird thing to think about, right? But if you think about if we play poker to infinity, the next bankroll, the next downswing is just is always bigger which is weird, not always bigger, but like there's always a bigger downswing in the future available to us. So they're unavoidable, which sucks. And it doesn't mean that you've necessarily done anything definitely wrong. But normally when you go through, uh, have a really bad losing session, there is normally a mixture of terrible card distribution and a little bit that perhaps suboptimal play. And what could be really helpful for some people is to leave, let the dust settle, let your emotions calm, Realize that, okay, takes time, it'll be all right. Realize that poker's not going anywhere anytime soon. You don't have to rush to recover anything. You've got plenty of time to try and recover. Um, and even that idea of recovery is a bit of a construction that we have, you know, made in our heads. What does recovery mean? You know what I mean? Oh, well, I want to recover losses. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but just whatever. And then what I would do is I'd really zoom out if you can as well. So. Think about, let's say you're playing spins and, you know, you go like, ah, I had a really bad session and my month's not looking very good, etc., etc. Well, zoom out because looking at month to month isn't that effective in spinning goes. Playing tournaments doesn't really make it sense. Even, you know, cash games, you're going to have better months and worse months. And so zoom out and look at your win rates over a year, two years or anything as big as you can and see how they look. And most likely you'll have, uh, hopefully at least, uh, some long-term trends that will be positive that you can take reassurance in and realize that 
those long-term trends will be realized in the long run. And then when the time is right, and when you've kind of, let's say, emotionally recovered a little bit, you can then do some analysis and try and figure out, well, what what went well and what went badly. And one of the nice things about every downswing is, is they're an opportunity to learn. So as I was saying earlier, everybody has a downswing. Everybody will feel like they're the unluckiest poker player in the world. Uh, we have a really interesting spot here, by the way. So we definitely could just raise and get it in. We're marginally ahead of aces. Uh, he's used a big size in, so I suggest this is probably less likely to be bluffy, but he is capable. We don't want to be up against like an 8-9 of diamonds or something like that, or a 10-9 of diamonds. I'm going to start with a call, I think. And then we'll check. I expect a big bet on the turn. So if we're reading king-jack, ace-jack, queens, kings, aces, typically on this turn, they'll go something like 8, 7.5. 6.7. So against that range, we have pretty good implied odds, I would suggest. And we definitely could, we've donked before as well, which is a benefit for our equity realization here. So I'm going to call again. And then we're going to donk shove the river. Now, we're going to think about this and we're going to think, well, what could we have as a bluff? And I'm hoping try this trick will maybe think we could have 7, 8 or 10, 7 or something and be turning it into a bluff. Because we bluffed before once. It's quite hard to fold aces, kings, queens here. Ace, jack, king, jack. Uh, we didn't get snap fold, so it's not air. So typically that's going to be those overs, the over pairs. I hope try this trick doesn't take too long. Okay. Um, Sorry, Lost Paradise. So the last thing to remember, good fold, by the way, try this trick. Uh, the last thing to remember is, um, yeah, we all, we all will go for a downswing, but here's where it's great. When you go on your downswing, if you can take the lessons on that downswing, and learn them better than, an, let's say, someone else would, in the long run, your downswing will be a net plus EV to your game. Does that make sense? So let's say we all have a downswing and we're all just uh, equally frustrated at that time. But then a few of, let's say half of us think, okay, this is really annoying, but you know what? I'm going to try and learn from it. I'm going to try and make some improvements. I'm going to try and see what what was good, what was bad, how much of it was just card distribution and, and variance and how much of that was my fault. And is this something I can do next time to be a bit more mentally prepared or could I do something that can actually uh, prevent something like this happening in the future? You know what I mean? Did I, was I tilted at all? Were there any issues in my mental game or was there some strategic problems, etc., etc.? Compared to the guy that goes, ah, you know, I just run bad in poker. It happens, shit happens, whatever. And I think if you find yourself in the uh, half that is more constructive in response to it, it actually ends up being a plus EV thing for your game long term, which is really weird. But that means that actually happy days and that's a great thing in a weird sort of way. So it, it's kind of like fun to think it's up to us how much we want to view the downswing as a bad thing. Just going to jam here. Um, don't expect too many kings or aces in their range, but they could definitely have a lot of bluffs here, by the way. So six, seven, six, four. We have had a couple of hero folds here, so he might get a bit frustrated with ace king and just decide that we've got a too many six, seven, six, four uh, type hands in our range. And we wouldn't jam with a queen, we wouldn't jam with a jack, we wouldn't jam with a five. Um, and so he may get, uh, let's say, curious, but we got a fold. Um, let's jump in for um, so he says, Is it me or lagging? Paradise says, Makes sense because also stakes will be higher. I play cash games mostly, so you'll lose more when you're moving up and hit a downswing. And it's not lagging for me. Thank you for letting me know it's not lagging, by the way. Uh, Queen Jack suited for like 15 ish. We're just gonna jam it in there. Beshreg, Tsvikas, Dragos, Tomas. Hope you're doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. I'll be doing great if I can hit. Jack. Or a 10. We've not run great in the all-ins today, huh? I think our 20th adventure might come to an end soon, ladies and gentlemen. 